Peter chapter 4 and verse 12. Uh, it is uh, most, our focus for today is on 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 12. Um, and I'm going to start with verse 11 because I think uh, it, it, it says something that we all need to hear. It says, If any man speak, and this is verse 11, If any man speak, let him speak as an oracle of God, or a mouthpiece of God, as an anointed vessel of God. If any man ministers, let him do so as the as of the ability which God giveth, that God in all things may be glorified through Christ Jesus, to whom the praise and dominion forever and ever. Verse 12 says, Behold, think it not strange concerning the fiery trials that is to try you as though some strange things have happened to you. But rejoice inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ's suffering, that this that his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also in exceeding joy. Verse 14. If ye are be reproached for the name of the Lord Jesus, are ye for sorry, be reproached for the name, happy are ye, for the spirit of the glory of God rests upon you. On their, on their part, he is evil spoken of, but on your part, he is glorified. Verse 15. But let not none of you suffer as a murderer, as a thief, or as an evildoer, as a busy body person uh, in other men's or other people's uh, of matters or fears. Yet, as if any suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on his behalf. For the time is come that judgment must begin in the house of God. Let me pause there. I want to use today for a, a, a theme, and this has been my spirit, amen, praise God, as I, I was just thinking about our church and uh, praying in the Holy Ghost, asking God, what should I minister on this morning? And I, I heard the Spirit of the Lord says, Tell, uh, preach on making sense of your suffering. Oh. Making sense of your suffering. Now I'm going to pause for a moment and say something. Uh, Pastor John, I, I struggle with this. I struggle with this because we're coming off the high of a wonderful celebration. And I argue with myself. I don't know if anybody else with the Lord. When, when, when you begin to hear something in your spirit that you think doesn't make any sense, you start talking back to yourself and God. And I, I said, no, no, no. I, I want to preach something that continues what was already said. Not this. Amen. Praise God. Then I get in here today and amen. Praise God. I heard my sister's testimony. Mm -hmm. I heard my sister's testimony and I saw the pictures of her car. Then I listened to the praise team, and, and, and they, they started to sing songs about amen, how to overcome what you're going through. Then I heard Mr. Susan get up and say, amen, praise God. I'm not deserving, but I'm thankful to God for what he's already done. Yes, and I realized, I realized, that, amen, all of a sudden, all of those things, even though none, none of us talk to each other, but all of those things, amen, began to play into what the Lord said, speak to the people about making sense of your suffering. Amen. And I, so, so today I want to interject this in your spirit, interject this in your thought, amen, praise God. Because the Bible says in verse 11, amen, praise God, if you're going to speak, speak as an oracle of God. Now, let me tell you what that means. It means if you're going to preach his word, make sure that you're echoing his thoughts. Yes. Mm -hmm. Let me say it again. If you're going to minister his word, make sure you minister his thoughts and not yours. Then he says, Amen, praise God. If you're going to minister in the dance, if you're going to minister in the praise of worship, if you're going to minister in the moderation of the service, if you're going to minister at all in any aspect of the service, make sure you minister according to the gift that God has given you. I wish I had a church of gifts. I don't intend to keep you long, but I, I, I want to be strong. Is that all right? This is sound like taking up a little bit, of, especially if my mom and I'm straining a little. And then first Peter begins to unlock and unpack some things that I think is relevant to everybody's life. Suffering is a part of our everyday experience. I don't know about you, but amen, I, I got saved, Mr. Leslie, I got saved and I thought for sure that now I'm on the Lord's side. And I, I was in my trouble thinking, looking back, I, I figured now I'm on the Lord's side, suffering ought to
to get less. I was thinking, I was thinking that once I got saved and get baptized and put on the name of the Lord Jesus, that the devil now I was going to back up out of my life and I was going to have room to just go through life uninterrupted. Anybody else other than me thought that when he was going to say, in fact, in fact, in fact, in fact, in fact, uh, someone help us with this one. In fact, in fact, in fact, amen, praise God. Uh, not only did I get seen and started to think that, but when I got the Holy Ghost, uh -huh, and I realized I had power in my life, I thought I was going to be able to speak to some situation and cause a situation in the name of the Lord Jesus to just back up. Hallelujah. And, and I know it's true because there were some situations. Now, I don't know how you got saved. Some folk are inspiration, some folk are desperation. I got saved out of desperation. And part of that desperation was that I saw God move in a miraculous way. So you can't make me doubt what God is able to do. And because of that, I walked around the first year of my salvation saying so that there is nothing God won't move out of my way. I always say, uh, two more praises in here. But here, uh, Peter unpacks the text and he says, suffering and it is a part of it. So he says, now I have to learn that as I continue to mature, and that, I, that believers suffer. I had to learn it, and I learned it the hard way. I, I watched as my family got saved and got anointed, and some miraculous things happened. The next thing I watched is what my sister testified, is that they hit a day when they lost everything. Let me say that again. I, they hit a day when they lost everything. They lost the business we had. And I, 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 I don't say this brightly, but I was growing up as a kid, as a spoiled child, and I praise God, because all of my needs were supplied, and my wants. Uh, but they hit a day in their walk with God, they lost the business, I watched my dad lose the job, I watched him and praise God, my mama go back up to work to make sure that we all could support ourselves, and all of this was happening while we got saved. I wish I had somebody here. Now, 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 I noticed simultaneously that there were some folks who got saved during the same time I did. And when they hit a season of suffering, they turned back to whence they came from and went back to the devil, went back into the world, went back into the lifestyle they had because they did not have a faith in God that could supersede suffering. Yes. I wish I had a church in here. Amen. Because you know that when you go through trials and tribulations, when you go through stuff you can't explain, and it, it messes with your faith, and you start to say to yourself, God, what kind of God am I serving who will not protect me in the midst of suffering? Go ahead. I see the little children, but I, 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 I learned something in that time, in that season, and then praise God, that I couldn't shout over. I couldn't dance over. I couldn't speak in tongues over. Amen. I learned something that no matter how anointed you are, I, oh, no, suffering is still going to come your way. Trials are still going to come your way. Attacks from the enemy are still going to come your way. Whatever you're going through. I wish I had about three real praises in here. No, 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 look at your name and say you're too anointed, though, for it to end that way. I wish I had a real praise say you're too anointed, though, for it to end that way. Let me just work a little bit here, and then I'll let you go for sure. Uh, so, suffering. Now, out of my human experiences, I realize that uh, even though. God moved cancer for my brother. He would not move some of the circumstances for my family situation. Now I got to admit, it messed with my religion. It messed with my faith. It messed with my growing up in God. And I started to ask God, the big why God? What is it that no matter how much some people are loyal, they still go through some stuff? No matter how much they worship, they still go through some stuff. No matter how much
much they look out for the needs of others, they still go through felt. In fact, in my observation, I notice that the people who seem to be most loyal seem to be the one who mostly go through the stuff. I wish I had somebody in here. Notice that the people who seem to do everything they can to give God everything they can seem to be always the one on the attack. Do I have a witness in here? I feel like praise in God. Come on, put those hands in there and praise. And so, and so I, I struggled for a moment um, with trying to answer the why. Uh, but I think I come up with some stuff uh, that the Bible reveals that helps me in my moment and is going to help you uh, as you're going through. Uh, uh, first thing to note is that everybody goes through a season of difficulty. Uh, let me say it again. Uh, I want to talk this morning about three things. Uh, one, the reality of suffering. Uh, Two, the reasons we suffer. And three, the reaction you ought to have to win the suffering. Now, first Peter begins to put pen to paper. And he said, Beloved, think it not strange. When you go through some fiery trials, Lord have mercy. Now, now notice he says, think the reality of suffering is that you're going to go through some trials. Uh, but when you go through some fiery trials, Minister Teacher, that's the stuff that gets with my mind. Fiery trials means that the devil targets you. Mm, no. And he aims at an area of your life uh, that he knows he can get your reaction. Uh, he knows that if I hit you hard in this area, it's going to weaken your faith. Uh, if I hit you in your family life, uh, it's going to mess up your stand with God. Uh, you're going to run and hide like Adam did. Uh, I wish I had a church in here. Touch your neighbors and it is a reality of suffering. Uh, to go through a season of suffering. Uh, Minister Deidre, he knows if he hits some people in their finances, uh, they will turn away from God because their evil won't let them be broke and still worship God. But I'm so glad I was mm, been there, done that, and had a t-shirt. Anybody else in here? Uh, devil, I don't worship God for money. Uh, so you can't use my finances against me. Anybody else can declare that? Come on, declare it with your own mouth. Devil, I don't worship God for money. Yeah, so money can't stop my worship. Do I have a praise I can hear? In fact, devil, the less money I have, the more I praise you. I wish I had some folk in here. You got nothing in your pocket but a praise in your heart. Nothing in the back but a praise on your lips. Thank you, Jesus. That's it, man. That's all I need. Amen. Uh, somebody called a fiery dog. He knows which child ought to use as a fiery dog against your faith. You got some of your children, Lord have mercy, that you expect certain things from. God have mercy. And so when they act crazy, it's just an act crazy child of mine. Oh, when they act outside themselves, you just say, I need the blood of Jesus. Well, you know you got that child that you know you expect better from. Lord, oh, it seems like the devil has launched a fiery dark on your child. Devil, devil, I come to speak against it today. The reality of my suffering. You don't know what the person sitting next to you has had to deal with. Is going through right now. Is taking everything out of them just to keep walking by faith. But they believe God in spite of the struggle, in spite of the suffering, in spite of the family attack, in spite of the financial woes. They trust God. Oh, give me a few more. Notice, he says, 
is a fire attack. So he says, there is a reality that all of us have to deal with. The preacher last, the last Sunday night says, oh, a fly is only attracted to something that's substantive. In other words, if it really has no value, the fly don't come after it. Well, while I was thinking on it, the Bible says, the flies not only come in oil, but flies come after meat. So it doesn't come after those who have the milk of the word. It comes after those who have the meat of the word. She was in a position to do something. She did it. 